Greetings, dear brothers and sisters. My name is Doug Sloan, and today I'm bringing you this message entitled, Oh, What a Night, a Tale of the Shepherds, which comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. May the Lord bless you as you listen to His Word, for He loves you very much. Now, as is my custom, I wish to share a little humor that is somewhat relevant to our message. As I prepared this message, I came across this joke entitled, Letter to God, that should put a smile on your face. And it goes like this. There was a man who worked for the post office whose job was to process all the mail with unreadable addresses. One day, a letter came in written with shaky handwriting to God with no actual address. He thought he should open it to see what it was all about. The letter read, Dear God, I am 83 years old and a widow, living on a very small pension. Yesterday, someone stole my purse. It had $100 in it, which was all the money I had until my next pension check. Next Sunday is Christmas, and I had invited two of my friends over for dinner. Without that money, I have nothing to buy food with. I have no family to turn to, and you are my only hope. Can you please help me? Sincerely, Edna. The postal worker was touched. He showed the letter to all the other workers. Each one dug into his or her wallet and came up with a few dollars. By the time it made the rounds, he had collected $96, which they put in an envelope and sent to the woman. The rest of the day, all the workers felt a warm glow thinking of Edna and the dinner she would be able to share with her friends. Christmas came and went. A few days later, after the letter came from the same old lady to God, all the workers gathered around while the letter was opened. And it read, Dear God, how can I ever thank you enough for what you did for me? Because of your gift of love, I was able to fix a glorious dinner for my friends. We had a very nice day, and I told my friends of your wonderful gift. By the way, there was $4 missing. I think it must have been those thieves at the post office. <laughs> okay, that's funny, but sad too. These poor postal workers had a bad reputation, just like the shepherds of old. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But let me first give a brief introduction. Has anyone ever received a birthday announcement? What a joyous occasion! The proud parents wish to share their joy and excitement with everyone, especially those who are near and dear to their hearts. So think about this for a moment. If you are the first person to receive the good news, you know that you're very special. Most new parents choose these people carefully. It's a big decision. Well, at least for most people. So here we are with the greatest birth announcement in all of history. If I had to guess who God would have told first, I would maybe say the king of Israel, or the chief priest, or even the emperor of Rome. It makes sense to tell the important people first, right? Wrong. If not those guys, how about the governor of Judea, or maybe the mayor of Bethlehem? Well, we know they weren't told. Why? Because God had chosen some very special people to hear the good news first, Yep, the shepherds. So that's what we're going to talk about today, the announcement to the shepherds and what they did with that information. Okay, before we get into today's scripture, we do need to talk a little bit about the shepherds, more specifically, the problem with shepherds. In the Old Testament times, shepherds were pretty important. In fact, many of the great men of God had been shepherds early in their life, like Moses and David. And even Jesus is called the Great Shepherd. So the career path as a shepherd has led to many great leaders. So why is that? Now I suppose that their duties required to care for and to tend to sheep would build character in them to one day lead and care for their people. Their duties would include leading, feeding, protecting, binding their wounds, comforting, and even watching over them as weak and helpless animals. But as time passed, this vocation became less and less desirable. 
as less honorable people began tending the flocks and herds. This task slowly changed from trusted sons and daughters to less concerned hired help. In fact, by the time Jesus was born, shepherds were actually looked down on. In the first century, shepherds were despised by society and rabbinical Jews. They were even considered ceremonially unclean under a rabbinical ban. Therefore, people refused to even give them charity. On top of this, they were typically uneducated, thieves, dishonest, liars, <laughs> and as such, they were considered untrustworthy. In fact, they were not even allowed to serve as court witnesses. So the bottom line is, they were viewed as a lower class citizen. Wow! So why on earth would God choose to reveal the birth of Jesus to people like this? Well, God often uses the weak and the lowly in life to humble the proud, even today. Remember the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29 that says, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Now that we know how shepherds were viewed, let's look at the scriptures to see how God used these people starting when the angels appeared. In Luke chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, which reads, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Okay, so these lowly shepherds were out in the fields on night shift. Hmm, night shift. That had to be hard. Time passes very slowly. The sheep were sleeping, and they were probably sitting around the campfire telling stories. All of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared, suddenly, like out of nowhere. Surprise! They were probably close to a heart attack. Remember, God had not spoken to anyone in 400 years. But guess what? The silent treatment just ended. And who got to hear the word of the Lord first? Yep, the shepherds. And the glory of the Lord shone around the shepherds. Light everywhere. No wonder these guys were terrified. Now, as I pondered this story, I wondered how similar it is for us today when God chooses us to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. God could have chosen to tell the rich and famous or the people in powerful positions, but no. God chose us, the lowly things of this world, to reveal the glories of Christ and to know about the gift of salvation that's still available in our generation. So if we ever feel like we're on the bottom rung of the food chain, we need to praise God for our lowly position in life. Now that the angel had appeared, let's listen to the pronouncement in verses 10 through 14 that read, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. The angel starts out with that all-familiar phrase, Do not be afraid. Duh. I would have been petrified. So why does God want to see me? Did I do something wrong? I remember back in school when the teacher would say, the principal's asking for you. Or while I was in the Air Force, the commander wants to see you right now. Oh man, nothing good ever comes out of that when somebody important wants an audience with us. It's usually really bad news. But here, 
Rather than bad news, the angel said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. What wonderful words. These people were desperately waiting for the coming of their Messiah. They were under persecution from Rome and wanted a deliverer to set them free. This news would indeed cause great joy. Everyone would be excited to learn about the birth of their Savior. The shepherds had to be filled with great joy to hear that the Messiah had just been born in Bethlehem, right down the hill from them. As their joy welled up, a great company of heavenly hosts, meaning angels, appeared praising God in heaven with those incredible words of comfort and peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. Let those words sink in a bit. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Peace on earth for everyone, right? No, but to those on whom His favor rests. That's people of faith like us. Even today, the fact that Jesus was born as the Savior of the world should give us great joy too. While the Jewish people were excited to have the long-awaited Messiah, we know the full meaning of His birth. Jesus came into the world to forgive sins. In doing this, God's favor truly rests on us. After receiving this wonderful announcement, the shepherds began the search. Verses 15 and 16 goes on to say, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After the angels left, their first thought was, let's go see the baby. But how would they find the right baby? Well, the angel gave them the sign in verse 12 saying, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in the manger. Now, they were probably perplexed thinking, in a manger? In a stable with animals? Yep. And I'm sure that they saw that special star over the stable too, that guiding light for the wise men. This reminds me of the old days when a car dealer or a circus would be in town. They would light up one of those massive spotlights pointing up in the sky. That helped people find their place. And everyone saw it. So they hurried off to find Mary, Joseph, and the newborn baby. I often wondered who was left behind to watch the sheep. Wouldn't you hate to lose the casting of lots for this? Or maybe they just left the sheep sleeping. Who knows? But they found Jesus just as they were told. Can you imagine how excited they were? Seeing the angels was not a hallucination or a dream. They did see them and they heard the proclamation and they have now seen the newborn king. So let's talk about how this relates to us. We too found Jesus through the leading of the Holy Spirit so we can see for ourselves the wonders of God, the Savior of the world. And we know what we have heard and what we have seen is true. With all this excitement in their hearts, they had to get out there and start sharing. Verses 17 through 20 tell us, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Okay, now for the fun part. Yep. These shepherds, the worst storytellers of the world, were off on a mission with their hearts filled with joy. They were telling everyone about seeing angels and what they had said about the baby. While everyone was amazed, who would believe them? They're shepherds, right? Some people might have believed them, but others probably waved them off as making up tall tales just to get attention. But what about Mary? The Bible said that Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. What did all of this mean to her? 
Both Gabriel and these shepherds called her son the Son of God, the Savior, the Messiah, and the Lord. It reminds me of the powerful song, Mary, Did You Know? Now, for those of you watching this message online, I'll add a link below to that song. It will surely warm your heart. Now, this was a wonderful time of great joy for both Mary and Joseph, along with the whole world. And that's what the message of Jesus is all about. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Now, to bring this message closer to home, I'd like to end with some closing thoughts that should help us see how we are like the shepherds. So consider the following. Just as God chose the lowly shepherds of that day to hear the good news about Jesus, He chose the lowly people of our day to also hear the good news, and that's us. Just as God used the miraculous presence of the angels to enlighten the shepherds, God also used the miraculous presence of the Holy Spirit to enlighten us concerning our Savior. Once the shepherds heard the good news, they hurried off to find Him. We also hurry off to meet Jesus once we understand the truth of God's salvation. As surely as they bowed their knees to worship Jesus, we too bowed in worship before our King and our Lord and our Savior. After seeing Jesus, the shepherds were filled with joy and had to tell everyone of what they had seen and heard. After coming to know the Lord, we too are filled with joy and are eager to tell everyone about our relationship with Christ and the joy we now experience. While there are so many similarities, there is one big difference between us, and that is that we know the real reason Jesus came. He came to forgive our sins, not to save us from Rome. For this reason, we should be filled with greater joy and even greater desire to share our faith. One last parallel to show our similarities. Think about this picture with these words that say, They heard the message and believed, and so did we. Now, let's close in prayer, giving thanks for the wonder of Jesus' birth. Our Father in heaven, we bless your holy name and give you praise. Our hearts are filled with inexpressible joy as we anticipate Christmas Day. May we never forget the profound gift that you gave all mankind. It's sometimes hard for us to fathom Jesus being born into this world as a man, but we know your plan of salvation through the sinless life and sacrifice Jesus made for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into the world to take away our sins. You are the best gift God has ever given mankind. May you enjoy your special day by receiving praise and worship from us and from all creation. We love you, Lord. Amen. My family and I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May the Lord give you great joy and peace this Christmas season and beyond.